Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm not sure if releasing this video is a good idea. Because I actually mastered Seth. I, I mastered him and he's 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 broken. He's like this is not normal. He's unbelievably broken. S plus not even S plus tier, broken tier. This is absolutely not normal. I'm telling you, like, the, when I say this is not normal, I've seen a lot. I've seen Evelyn, I've seen Kha'Zix, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff. And I'm saying this is not normal because this is even more broken than that. And today, I'm going to teach you exactly how to play set in the current meta. It is a lot different than before. And there is a lot of little secrets in the build in how to play him and all of that. So I have two gameplays. One of the two games, I'm going to be against a bit of a squishier comp. And one of the games, I'm going to be against a bit of a tankier comp. And showcase to you guys how to play against either of them. Um, so let me show you how to build it. This is extremely important, how to build this champion. So as you may see, there's a lot of items. And all of these items are actually viable. So let me explain. This one you may think is a misclick, right? This is a misclick. And I want you guys to test your knowledge right now. Is this item a misclick or not? If it's not, why would this ever be a good item on set? Aren't you supposed to be a tank? Pause the video right now if you want to answer that question. Because this, this is a really good one. So let me tell you the secret of this item. Oh my god, this is a dirty item. So first of all, early game, big, big damage, right? Like Even if you're against a tank in the lane, this item is still going to give you a lot of damage. But hell, it's gonna fall off mid late game, right? Isn't it much better to get armor boots, mercury strats, you know what I mean? Even a glutinous greaves. And the answer is yes, you can get any of those. But the whole point of this boot is your ultimate. Ah, there you got it. So late game, when you use your ultimate, you get that penetration. This 10 armor penetration is gonna shred through the squishies. And when you throw a tank into the enemy backline and you have these boots, guys. You are gonna, you're gonna one shot them. You're gonna, you're gonna one, you can one shot entire teams. And I'm not even exaggerating with this. So your first actual item will be, of course, the hard steel, guys. This is the bread and butter of set. Very good for trading. Like you can jump on an enemy trade. And the good thing about set is the hard steel takes a little bit of time to stack up. And during this time, you can kind of chase the enemy. And then when you have, when the, when the moment arrives that you can hit the enemy, you can either use your third ability to pull them into you and proc the heart steal, or your first ability to chase them down with movement speed. So that's why, like heart steal, you can easily get 500 plus HP from this item as a bonus. And then second item, situational. Are you against tanks? And when I say tanks, I'm talking about tanks with armor. So against a Ramus, against a Thrash. Are you against Malphite champions with armor? You're gonna always build a Black Cleaver second. With this item, you'll win all of the 1v1s against them. Without this item, you're never gonna 1v1 a Malphite, okay? If you're not against tanks with armor, you're gonna skip this item altogether. No black lever, and you're immediately gonna jump to the Steric Cage. Steric Cage is always gonna be your second or third item. I know everyone wants to build Titanic Hydra. I know this is the item everyone just wants to build, and it's good. However, I do not suggest you to build a second item just because, guys, Steric's Gage on set. Good lord, good, good lord, it's broken. It's not normal, and. Like, they think they can kill you, and then you get the Sterics Gauge, the Tenacity, your second ability, your everything is just so much damage. And the beauty is, you know what the beauty is? Sterics Gauge gives you a shield with the lifeline based on your bonus HP. What does Heart Steel do? It gives you 700 HP and even more bonus HP. This makes the Sterics Gauge an insanely good item, and that is why I've incorporated within this build before the Titanic Hydra. Third or fourth item, you are going to build the Titanic Hydra. Whichever, whatever game you're in, this item will be crazy on set. The damage, like, can you imagine ulting an enemy into five people, four people, sorry, and then pulling all of them together and hitting a first ability with the Titanic Hydra? Yes, that's going to do a lot of damage. So get this as your third or fourth item. Now we got onto the situational items. So let me talk about a few of them. Divine Sunder against tanks. This one... Is a little bit of, uh, of an opposite item of Black Cleaver against HP tanks. Are you against a Scion that also built a Heart Steel? Boom, you go Divine Sunder. You can go Divine Sunder, second item, by the way. Are you against um, a Thresh who went Warmog? Boom, Divine Sunder. Are you against a Vi and, and, and a Swain? And you know what I mean? Are you against those types of champions? Boom, Divine Sunder. 
That's why you boom in the Divine Sunder, right? Against the HP tanks. Hallbreaker. Do you want to split push? Buy the Hallbreaker second item. This is all the second item that I'm talking about, right? You can also build two of these items together. It's totally fine. But I really suggest you to not swap out any of these three items. Get a Heart Steel, get a Sterix Gauge, get a Titanic Hydra. Spear of Sojin, if you're very ahead in the game, get a Spear of Sojin, fourth item. You know, if you're really ahead, Spear of Sojin is GG. Edge of Night. If you're unbelievably behind, get an Edge of Night. This can save you and, and at least allow you to ult. Anti-heal, Chain Chainsword. And here, I like you really want to stick to the HP items. You don't really want to build armor or magic. I mean, it's good on set, but with my playstyle, you don't want to. Because you kind of want them to damage you. Uh, and you want to hit that second ability. You want to do thousands of damage with that second ability, right? But if they're full crit, if you're against the Yasuo, Caitlyn, and, and, and Rengar combo, get a Renduin's Omen. Warmog is against like a full poking team. Are you against the Ziggs and the Varys? Get yourself a Warmog. Amaron Twinguard, maybe. If you really want to be tanky, you can get it as your last item. Uh, I prefer these HP items myself, like if, if I can say so. One item you should never, ever, ever, ever get is a Death Dance. You are literally countering yourself if you get a Death Dance. Because then, of course, you're delaying the damage. Your second ability is not going to do as much damage. Never, and I repeat, ever get a Death Dance. So yeah, for the boots, you can go Glutinous Griefs for safe damage later on in the game. You can go for Boots of Dynamism for very big early game damage. And one-shotting power with your ultimate late game against Squishies. Of course, Magic Resist or Armor. If you if, the, if they're full Magic Resist, you go uh, Magic Resist, Mercury Threats. If they're full Attack Damage, you go Armor Boots. More often than not, I go for the Glutinous Griefs or the Boots of Dynamism. For the Enchantment, Protobelt, if they have like a Lucian and enemies that can kind of run away from you. Stone Plate, if you want to dive in and just tank like crazy. Stasis, if you've fallen very behind and the enemy Fizz, for example, is one-shotting you. Um... That's it for the items. So for the runes, you always go Grasp of the Undying. Always go Courage of the Colossus. Courage of the Colossus with your third ability is so good early game. Not No, sorry, not early game. Um, so good in lane. And then, of course, Courage of the Colossus with your ultimate is great. Especially in the late game. Second wind. Very important to win your lane. Overgrowth. Very important for the late game. And here is a little bit of a, of a secret sauce as well. We go for Brutal, guys. One thing I've tried that didn't really work well is uh, Ingenious Hunter. This one may seem ingenious because, you know, hard steel, hard, the hard steel cooldown is going to be reduced. The Sterex Cage cooldown will be reduced. The Titanic Hydra cooldown will be reduced. The Divine Sunderer will be reduced. However, when you play the set, it can be a little bit tricky to get five kills. Like, I generally recommend this item on, like, a support or... or uh, jungle because support and jungle can very easily get five unique kills while the baron laner is generally kind of stuck in the baron lane with only like one two or three unique kills so you're, you're not going to be getting the most out of that rune even though it technically makes a lot of sense to get on set get yourself a brutal and brutalize the enemy in the baron lane and for the spell we go spells we go ignite and flash that's it for the build let's now get into the gameplay i want to say by the way i made a set video recently which i think was quite a good video but I now mastered set. Like for that video, it was it was not necessarily that I mastered set for last video because I didn't. For the last video, it was just a really cool game and showcasing you guys the power of set. This video, on the other hand, is just me. I mastered this champion, and and I was like, I need to make another video because now he's so ridiculously strong. So let me tell you about all the little tips and tricks on how to play this champion. See, now I'm against a Malphite. It's not the easiest matchup. The second game you're gonna see to yeah, the second game you're gonna see today, I'm against the hardest matchup. The hardest matchup for set in the game is Singed. Uh, reason being is because a good Singed can can very easily outtrade you, and you can never hit hard with your second ability on a Singed because he's doing constant damage, sustain damage. See, the thing that set does not like is constant sustain damage. So for example, you really want to avoid Morgana, you really want to really really want to avoid Zyra, you really want to avoid uh Teemo, you really want to avoid Singed. You want to avoid those types of champions. So you know, you know when we're talking draft, you want to avoid those types of champions that do like over time a lot of damage. Um you want to you can pick it into everything else by the way, but those types of champions are really annoying because they drain your HP. I'm ganking mid? I wanted to gank mid, yeah. They're draining your HP and you, you can't really do anything about it. 
So some things. Let me tell you the ideal set draft. Oh, that was beautiful, by the way. But let me actually tell you the complete ideal set draft. The ideal draft would be the enemies having one tank and four squishies. And your plan would always be to ult the tank into the squishies. That's that's pretty much always going to be your plan, right? And that's one thing about the set ultimate that I really want to tell you guys. You really want to try to ult tanks into the enemy team. Of course, it's it's also good to um, sort of catch a high value enemy. If it's the enemy ADC, you know, you can flash behind them, ult them into your team. Sure, that's also good, right? But generally, it's going to be better. It's always going to be better to, to ult a tank in the middle of the enemy team because you're slowing everyone. You're, you're just... The damage is ridiculous. Like, the damage you do is ridiculous. I'm getting ganked. I'm really not sure what's happening right now. I want to... I know Malphite has no mana. What is he doing? He doesn't know I'm here. Yeah, so I'm just going to ult him behind my turret. Boom, boom. Don't know if I can kill him. Malphite has ult, but he doesn't have mana. So, I'm just kind of taking it easy here because... Oh, I wanted to help them with the Warwick. And the good thing about Seth, guys, is he heals so much. He heals so much. And it's not like you... It's not like he heals out of combat. He always heals. He should be dead. Second ability. And flash away. There we go. I flashed away in case Malphite would ult me. Because perhaps they could have killed me with the Malphite ult. So I just made sure to secure that kill with the Ignite. I'll help him. I'll leave my lane to help him. But it seems like my mid laner is also helping. Which is really good. Oh. Oh, he's alive. Let's go. And by the way, guys, I am doing a skin giveaway, like always, giving away three skins on my YouTube channel. And all you have to do to enter is put down a comment under the video. And I would also really appreciate it if you guys can give this video a like. Let's see if this video can go somewhat viral and wild. If you know, get like, I don't know, like 30, 40, 50k views. That would be pretty sick. Although, maybe that's also not a good idea. Because then everyone is going to learn how broken Set is and learn how to play him. Let me tell you, it's right now... Probably, together with Mundo, but this one is even more broken than Mundo, the most annoying enemy to play against. Yeah, Set is more annoying than Mundo, 100%. Because at least Mundo gets countered by like true damage type of stuff. Set does not get countered by that because of his second ability. As I said, the only counters to Set is that the, the Morganas, the Teemos, the, the, those types of champions. It's the only thing you can really do against Set right now. Besides that, you're just screwed. You're never going to win against a Set if you play it correctly. So, how do you lane with Set, right? Um, Set has one of the strongest 1v1s even early game with all of the abilities. You know, if the enemy gets close to you, you can pull them in with your third ability. And first ability is also very strong. Basic attack, basic attack, first ability, first ability. You can you can uh, reset your basic attack like that and do four attacks in a very quick succession. So, that's basically your bread and butter in the early game. Your basic attacks, your third ability, your first ability, and that... Whenever you want, you can use your second ability as well. You can use this. And what I recommend early game. So late game, we all know, you know, you want to hit like a big second ability. Early game, on the other hand, I actually suggest you to sort of use your second ability in the middle of the fight. Even though it's not going to do max damage. You'll be able... Oh, look at that. Oh, we killed all of them. Except, except for my fight. But what I was, what I was getting to... So let's say you're in like a very close 1v1 with Darius. You're fighting him. It's generally going to be better to time your second ability with his ultimate. Rather than you trying to do maximum damage with your second ability. You know what I mean? So during a 1v1 in the Baron lane, you really want to make sure you damage the enemy with your second ability. But also that you tank a lot of damage with it. So you can sustain the fight a bit better and win. And another thing with Seth... Is you always want to fight. You want to keep fighting. Because you heal up. The enemy doesn't. Of course there's champions like Garen. Like Mundo that also heal up. But you heal up so much. And this is why we've incorporated the second wind as well. So the playstyle is. You're not going to farm passively. You're going to fight. The only moment I want you guys to not fight. Is when you're freezing the wave. Look at this damage by the way. I have ult. I could, I could ult him here to block the card, but I ulted a little bit too early. Oh, I killed him. But do you see how ridiculous that is? You have to stay calm and collective. And I suggest, if you want, I suggest uh, you go back and look at the way I combo my abilities. Because I can talk about all of it in detail. But um, 
I actually suggest you, I, I did actually, you know, I told you basic attack, basic attack, first ability, first ability, or basic attack, third ability, and then you can use your th first ability. You actually should watch it in slow motion to see exactly what I'm doing to turn these types of fights around. And let me tell you another thing about set. This is also incredibly important. Let's say you're pretty low HP. And the enemy is chasing you. You can run around. And you need to remember your passive is healing you up by a lot. So you can sort of run around. And then after 10 seconds, you'll be able to tank a couple more hits of the enemy. So you can go back to fighting. This is what I really want you guys to remember about set. The passive healing. Like really actually actively pay attention to the passive healing. Haha. <laughs> And, and make use of it. Oh, I forgot to say one more thing about the draft. Um, Nasa, uh, Nasa. Set is very good against enemy champions that get a lot of health. So, of course, I said Cyan and stuff. But Nasus, for example, too. Because when Nasus ults, you can ult the Nasus right back into the enemy team. Lulu as well. When Lulu ults someone, that someone gets bonus HP. And then you can ult that person into the enemy and do more damage because of the enemy Lulu's ultimate. That's funny now, isn't it? So the, the enemy Lulu can sort of sabotage her own team. Imagine if the enemy Lulu ults the frontliner and you then ult that frontliner back. Oh my god, that will be crazy. And you need to also remember, you can you can get hard steel on every enemy. Look at that damage, man. So like I, I procced hard steel on Malphite and then I did it on the, on the Warwick. Here I realized that he's hella tanky, and that this is not gonna be an easy kill. Ah, okay, I'm dead. Yeah. That was actually close, not gonna lie, like... If I had a little bit more HP, my ult, I could've killed one of them at least. In this game, I believe I tried to go Titanic Hydra second, but that's how I came to the conclusion that it's not really worth it to go Titanic Hydra second. It's much better to go Starix Cage, much, much better. Or a Black Cleaver, like, depending on the game, of course. Yeah, she killed Twisted Fate. Very nice. So that also pushes turrets pretty fast, even if you don't have Hobbreaker. Hobbreaker. So that's also something to keep in mind. Um, if you see a free turret, go for it. You push it really fast. Like that's another thing. He did, I mean, what is his weakness? I'm trying to figure out what is Set's weakness. He doesn't have a weakness. If you get bursted down, you can just use your second ability to tank it up. You have no like right here. I could have used my second ability. I did. Look at but I mean look at this. Look. What is this what is she supposed to do? Can anyone tell me what is she supposed to do right here? She hit everything on me and I simply ah I'm dead. Yeah, okay. I, I just died. There's really no defending that. I should not have wasted my flesh. I just really didn't want to die. Yeah, so I went Titanic Hydra a second, and I do want to say it did good damage. But sacrificing the tankiness of the Styrex Cage is not worth it in my opinion. Also, Styrex Cage does actually do more damage. Um, Titanic Hydra is really only worth it as a late item. This is something a lot of people haven't figured out yet. And the reason being is Titanic Hydra gives you 2.5 attack damage per 100 bonus health you have. Early on in the game, like right now I have like 1000 bonus health. So I'm only getting 25 attack damage from it. In the late game, when I've stacked my heart, still gotten my items, I'll have like 4,000 bonus health. That means the Titanic Hydra alone will give me 100 attack damage, guys. See, now the item gets good. And this little calculation of mine should tell you that this is a late game item, right? And that you really shouldn't get it very early on in the game. It's much better to get an item like Hysteric Sketch. There we go, easy peasy kill. I, I could have proxied farmed that wave. I should have actually proxy farmed that wave, to be fair. I could have proxied it, and now I would have already been pushing the turret. It would have been faster. Yep. Ah, come on, turret. Basically, in a team fight, what, I, what the ideal team fight in this game would be if I ulted Malphite. Look at that hard steel damage, by the way. Yeah, so the ideal team fight would be if I ult Malphite into all of them. Like right here, I could ult Malphite into Lux! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. I don't, I, now I got my Star Station. Now, now it will do a lot of damage. Like, oh, I went for Spear of Sojin again. You remember when I told you guys, if you're snowballing the game, you go Spear of Sojin. 
Um, only if you're snowballing. Otherwise, you don't want to build that on set. Because the point is, after you ult, since you're snowballing, you're not going to die anyways. So after you use your ultimate with a Spear of Sojin, you're just going to run down all of them with your abilities. You have no mana, so you can spam everything. So you can spam the hell out of your abilities for the next 6 seconds. You'll get bonus movement speed too, so it's really good for set when you're ahead. If you're behind, much better to get some other items that I've talked about. Where's Malphite? I just want to ult Malphite into them. Like, I'll one shot. There he is. There he is. I'm waiting for the Malphite. Look. I'm waiting for the. There we go. Come on. This looks like the setup. I'm, I'm just waiting. You can see I don't want to ult. The moment he goes back, now. Oh my god. What is that? I just one shot their whole team. Oh my god. What was that? <laughs> that's one ult. That's only my ultimate that just blew them up. We win the game. 12 minute game. This is a 12 minute game. I have a very intense game next for you guys, but I really wanted to show you this one. I want to say a lot of the games went like this. I played a whole lot of set today and yesterday. I played like 10 games of set in the new patch and every game was just absolute ridiculousness. So let's take a look at how much damage I did, how much damage I tanked, how much I healed. Look, I did most damage by far. I tanked most by far and I healed up the most. Very funny now, huh? Very balanced. He has everything. So, oh yeah, here we can see the runes as well, if you're interested. Let me let me go to the next gameplay now. Uh, that is going to be this one. I am against the hardest matchup for Set right now. But, uh, yeah, I, I got pretty good at Set. Let's just say it like that. So today, now I'm going to show you guys how to play against the Singed. Essentially, your second ability is useless against the Singed. Uh, it will never do damage. It will never let you tank anything. It's useless. Like your second ability, it's useless against the Singed. It will not do anything. He kind of made the mistake to get close enough to me to give me my third ability. And look, this is how you play with Singed. I'm not stepping in his gas. You see how? You see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of hitting him. Pull, boom, boom, and that's it. I wanted to flash because a single attack plus ignite will kill him. However, he used his ghost, so I don't. I think I barely wouldn't have made it. I'm. St yeah, there we go. So he came just a tad bit too close. So of course I can just do that and kill him. Uh, I don't think he saw that one coming. You can use your flash combo with Set's third ability. Practice it in practice mode, and you'll be able to do it. I want to say that it's not that hard, but you will fail it if you've never done it before. Right here, I wanted to proxy farm a little bit. I know Master Yi is on my side, but it's one minute and five into it. So he's he's like, he's taking these ones right now. So I was timing. Okay, if he rotated now, he's going to be here. But then I didn't see him. So he's probably moving to his blue buff. So I just ran away. I ran away. Now I'm wasting his time. He's losing his farm. And Master Yi is probably on the blue side, but just not fast. Yeah, there he is. You see? So I proxied, I didn't proxy too much, because if I stayed for too long, he would have rotated to me and killed me. Um, and I made Seth Singed lose a lot of farm from that, by doing that. So it was, it was very good for me. Again, if he goes for a minion, I'll pull him in. I don't want to be going into his gas. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, I, want, I went into his gas, but just a little bit. You never want to chase him down. If he runs away, just let him run. Just let him run. Unless you can kill him, of course. But like right here, look. I'm not going to chase him. I'm not going to chase him. This is how you want to play. You just want to play around the gas against the Singed. And never disrespect the Singed. I'm telling you guys. You're going to get punished for it if you play set. If you disrespect the Singed, he's going to fling you under his turret. Root you under the turret. And you're just dead. Like you cannot do anything against that. And remember, second ability useless. Oh, by the way, the way you want to upgrade your abilities. Every game. First, you want to max your first ability. Then you want to max the third ability. Then you want to max the second ability. Reason that maxing second ability is really not good is, even though the cooldown gets reduced a bit, um, 
The third ability is more useful. And the second ability is mostly about like just using it once in a fight and just having a big boom. Of course, you're going to actually use it more often in late game because your cooldown gets reduced. But the point is, using your third ability more often in a fight is more valuable than your second ability. Okay, I want to time my second ability good here. Boom. He's dead. Very nice. Calm and collective, as you can see. Even in a situation like that, stay calm and collective. Make the right decisions and you'll have the best chance to actually win a fight like that. It looked doomed. But because I ignited him under my turret, I hit him with my grasp of the undying, I did not rush my second ability, I went all the way under my turret to make sure they tanked the turret to go on me, that's how I was, how I was able to kill the master. Again, gotta be a bit careful, but I know I have courage of the colossus, which is why I'm, I'm able to trade with him like that. I'm utilizing the courage of the colossus by pulling him in with my third ability, which procs the courage of the colossus. And that wins me the, that wins me the, uh, what is it called? Look at how much extra HP I got from Heartsteel, by the way, it's ridiculous. That wins me the 1v1 matchup. Yeah, so I am gonna go for uh, those boots. What are they called? Brain, sometimes I get such a brain fart, man, with names especially. I actually forgot the name. I actually forgot the name. Wow, okay, but you know which ones I'm talking about, the armor penetrating boots. Pull him in, boom. I didn't proc my heart steal, but there we go, now I did, fine. And here I'm simply, you know why I use second ability? To tank his his gas, that's literally all, the only reason. Because I know it's useless. So I, I just used my second ability right there, because I was in the middle of his gas, just to tank a little bit of his gas. Again, be careful, I don't want to ult him right here, because he can fling me backwards, now I could ult him. Yeah, there we go. Flash. There we go. Nice. So you don't want to ult a singed under his turret. Because if like he can fling you back. And and when you get flinged under the turret, you're going to die. Like, you're not going to win that fight. But right there, if you can ult him, of course, out of his own turret, why wouldn't you? So I killed him. And yeah, another flash combo you can do. I've already showcased two flash combos in this game. First one is with your third ability. You have, an, you have another one with your second ability. And this one is equally, if not more important. Because this one, imagine you're super late game. You ulted someone into the enemy team. You've tanked so much damage and you're about to do 2,500 true damage with your second ability. And you're going to miss. You can actually adjust it with your flash to try to exactly hit the enemy you want to hit and absolutely one-shot them. So learn that one too. Before you ever touch set, learn that one too. And here, heart steal. I want to chase him for the heart steal. See, it can be worth chasing him in his gas to proc my heart steal. Like, for you know, for things like that, it can be worth. Or if you have a divine sunderer, for example, perhaps you could walk in his gas for a little bit and proc the heart steal. Again, like here, you see, I'm avoiding it. I'm not gonna walk too close to him because he's gonna fling me under the turret and I'm gonna die. So, I do not want that. <laughs> okay, heart steal. If I can proc it again, it would be very great to get more HP. You need to basic attack, by the way, to proc hard steel. Uh, it doesn't work with abilities. There we go. Ult, 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 ult. If I can hit my ult here. You can see how devastating it is to get hit under the turret like that, by the way. It's dangerous. You're gonna take a whole lot of turret shots when that happens. The enemies took the dragon. That's not good. Damn. Boots of dynamism. Got it. Brain is back. So what am I gonna, am I gonna go Black Cleaver? No, right? Am I? No, yeah. You see this game, I get Boots of Dynamism and we go to the Styrex Cage. Because even though Singed is going tanky, their entire team is squishy. And I'm, I'm dominating this Singed anyways, so why the hell would I go for Black Cleaver? I don't need it. You only wanna go Black Cleaver if you, you know, as I said, if they have like Ramus and stuff, or if your enemy Baron Daner has armor and you're just unable to win a fight against him. I could flash to Syndra. I could, another thing I do a lot on set is in the mid lane, I go on that bush and I flash behind their turret. Like, you know, I go here. Oh. So I go here, I flash and I ult the mid laner back. Or I go here, flash over that wall and ult the mid laner back. I do that very often and it works incredibly well uh, to gank them. You're really going to surprise enemy mid laners like that. 
And you're going to make your mid laner very, very happy when you do that. And this game was actually super close because you'll see the enemy Tristana is going to get pretty damn fed. Which is also quite an annoying champion for Set to deal with because she has so much range. So this game will be very interesting. You'll see. Again, no gas. We're just waiting. He gets close. I tried to pull him in, but... But now I walk into the gas to proc Heartsteel. Taking a little bit of damage. Come on, Heartsteel. Ah. There we go, I proc Heartsteel. And I get flinked under the turret. I'm Half-Life. Like, this is what I mean. You see how, like, getting flung under the turret is just so devastating when you play set? You just cannot do anything. Another thing, this is very advanced. Um, oh. He's dead anyways. Yeah. Um, so another thing, you when you use your ultimate as a set, you become unstoppable. You can actually use this to your advantage. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, an hour ago, I was in a game against a Malphite. I saw that the enemy Malphite was ulting me, so I ulted him back. Of course, he dodges my ult because he's unstoppable too. But I was able to dodge his ultimate with my ultimate. So that was really good. I was under his turret, so I ulted out of the turret. Of course, I didn't pull him with me, but I did. I avoided an ultimate like that. And if you're about to get stunned or anything like that, you can, again, avoid it with your ultimate. So it's very, very good. It's very good. If Vi is ulting you, you can ult her back. Now, of course, you're both not going to hit each other. Ah, he smited me. If he didn't smite me, I would have killed him. Now, when Cinch is about to fling you back, you can, of course, also ult him. And then you're going to dodge it. So keep keep all of those, those different things in mind. Another thing you need to keep in mind is you can die during your ult. You can take damage during your ult. So don't wait la till last second with your ult. Because you can actually die during your ult. And then it's going to be useless. It won't do damage. Trying to waste his time here of the ma of the Master E. I can actually 1v2 them. That's why I'm not very scared. Although I'm not going to flash into them. Of course, that's a stupid idea. But they cannot kill me, even in a 1v2. Like, they cannot. These two cannot kill me either. Like, what are they supposed to do? Just stasis? Okay, I dodged the Lux uh, first ability. Okay, look now. I'm walking around. Look at my health. Look at my health, guys. Look at how much I'm healing. Remember, I was at like 2 or 3% HP. Of course, I took the honey fruit now, though. But I'm gonna go back in. Ooh, Tristana. Ah, Tristana killed me. 800 gold bounty there. What is that Rakan doing, man? What is my bot lane doing? Like, you know the game is gonna be bad when your bot laner picks Misfortune. I don't know why, but no one knows how to play Misfortune. It's so ridiculous. I mean, to be fair, it's quite hard to play Misfortune on a high level. Even though Misfortune is considered to be one of the easiest ADCs, to play her effectively in higher ELOs is incredibly hard. Like, it's against good players, I should say. ELO doesn't really matter right now. Um, so that's why I feel like a lot of players really struggle on Misfortune. Also, Misfortune requires a very selective draft to work. And if you look at our draft, actually, it's pretty much the perfect draft for Misfortune. I can ult in, Rakan can ult in, and Misfortune can just ult. She can destroy all of them. Another thing as a set, you can ult the enemy jungler away from the objective. This is another very, very good thing. Oh, look at this. I'm just... I mean, I made sure to kill the Tristana here because, uh, yeah, he's going to get one shot. Yeah, there we go, triple kill. But then again, this game is not over at all. You'll see, man. Like, just watch this game all the way through. This will get pretty crazy, this game. It's Tristana, ooh. Was annoying. Five are dead. So right here, I was about to push an inhib, but the thing is, you know, this is a thing. With the mid lane inhib, I actually don't. Okay, so it's good, but it's also bad. Right here, I tried to leave it at like a simmer of health. If it died, it died. It doesn't matter. It actually didn't die. I was actually happy that it didn't die. Reason being is because if you take the mid lane inhib, of course you're gonna spawn the bigger minions. Bigger minions means more gold and experience for the enemy. See, bigger minions on the side lane is great. Because you can apply side lane pressure. But in the mid lane, they can take care of it so easily. Because in the mid lane, everyone is close to the mid lane anyway. So no one has to rotate to it. 
you're just simply gonna push it and when they have the buffed waves they're gonna get more gold out of it see here i'm getting a uh, spear of surgeon again because i'm very ahead same story um so what was i saying yeah so taking that mid inhib really can like it can allow enemies to make a comeback i'm like not even kidding some games i would genuine genuinely say that it's better to leave the mid lane turret up rather than take it and i think this game is a good example of it i'm i was actually honestly glad that it didn't die because i was i was telling myself am i really not gonna take this turret and then then i was actually happy when it didn't die because i realized right i realized if this turret had died the enemies would have been able to farm so many minions for free i'm split pushing here because again i have i have three items i'm gonna one shot turrets so as long as my team just doesn't die yeah i'm pinging that i'm going here okay they killed master here that's good although tristana is probably gonna clean yeah tristana is gonna clean them up isn't she i'm pushing though see side lane is a different story you always want to get a side lane turret it doesn't matter when you're in the game you always want to get the side lane one so i'm gonna get this one and after yeah i'm gonna get this one look at how fast basic attack basic attack first ability first ability of course after this one i'll go for the mid lane one too I mean, that looks like a free kill. Wow. She does so much damage. I cannot reach her. Did you see that damage? I was like 75% of her HP. One of my second abilities. 75%. Like, with that Spear of Sojin, if I had a Spear of Sojin, I would have one-shot her with a single second ability like that. Although, again, I gave her a bounty, which is really not good. That is really not good giving her a bounty like that. But I'm sitting on four items. I'm gonna just straight up one shot their whole team. What should my last item be? Probably a Kempunk Chainsword. Just for the sake of having anti-heal and having another damage item. Just for the Tristana. Though I don't want her to heal. She's essentially the only problem. Like she I have 4600 health, by the way, guys. 4670, just so you know. Casually sitting at 4,000, 4 almost 4.7k health. Again, don't walk into his gas, and you'll be fine. Easier said than done in some scenarios, of course, but really try to avoid it. Because, like, you want to avoid anything that drains your HP without you being able to hit a big second ability. Taking burst damage is completely fine. So, like, if Lux bursts me, it's fine, because I can then follow up with an ultimate, for example. And use my second ability to one-shot enemies. We should have done Baron here. I actually pinged it as well. But no one really cared. So what am I supposed to do? I mean, I cannot do Baron myself. We could have gotten Baron here. Together with the team. I feel like this is very risky. She has a Guardian Angel. I want to I ult Singed into them. Of course, again, like last game. That's my plan. Not necessarily into them, more like into Tristana. It's the only one I really care about. Yeah, look at how much she's healing. So anti heal will be very good. This would be huge. If he comes close to the wall, I can ult him in and kill all of them. He didn't though. There we go. Now he did. But Tristana is just healing so much. Yeah, I'm dead. Look at their base though. Come on. Ah, it's not... They're not... Yeah, the minions just spawned. Oh my god, Tristana is going to be full build, guys. Level 15 Tristana with a Guardian Angel. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. This is not good. This is honestly not good. Although, I am playing set though. So, if I catch this Tristana, I can kill her. But you can see, if I was any other champion, what am I supposed to do against a Tristana, right? At least I have counterplay. Like, it's like, yeah, I, I have counterplay. Because I'm playing set. Although it's still really hard, because, yeah, she has more items than me. The moment she, yeah, she has five items. She even went Serpent Fang, are you kidding me? To, to take away my shield? Wow, for real? I really want that red buff, because that misfortune is useless. I'm glad she understood. I was thinking about like trying to flash behind Tristana and ulting her into our team or something like that. But then Miss Master Yi is split pushing? 
So what I was thinking here, I'm just gonna ult Tristana away if she comes close. Or I'm gonna ult this, this Syndra into all of them. Just like that. Okay, she's into the Guardian. I have no idea what Master is doing. Just Tristana. Only one we care about is Tristana, actually. Uh, at least me. If we, if we kill her... Nice. Now it should be game over. I have no idea what that Master was doing, by the way. What the hell was that Master you doing? Why did he just suddenly decide to split push? 2,332 damage on that second ability, by the way. I mean... Ah! Stone plate? Okay. He's damaging me. Look at that. Look at that CC as well. 13 kills in this game. What a crazy game. So let's take a look at how much damage I did, how much damage I tanked, how much I healed. Probably gonna be the most out of everyone again, just because of how broken set is. It's, it's really, it's really ridiculous. I've said it like 20 million times in this video already, but it's honestly just really ridiculous how broken set is right now. Just take a look. Of course, I got MVP again. So I did the most damage. I tanked the most damage, and I healed and shielded the most damage too. Again, set. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're going to enjoy your endeavors on set as well. And I will see you all in the next lot of video. Bye-bye.